We're all, you know, a lot of us are going through a hard time in life. Some people have been bullied. Some people are distressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. And the world puts a lot of this shit in your mind. It's not just you. Yeah, you help it. And my whole thing is about, I had to develop a mindset, a mindset that was indestructible. I had to armor plate my mind. And it's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. Can't hurt me just became a message, I, you know, I would say to myself. And that's just kind of where it comes from. What I find so interesting is your concept of the governor, mm -hmm. that basically, I have the chills, that an expert is somebody who's gonna tell you what your limits are, right. rather than the person that's out there practicing getting you beyond the limits. So what is the governor and how do we strip it out of our lives? I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. So the mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor's set for 91. Once that governor sets in, you get to 91, that car starts doing this. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that fucking factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction when things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you that's where all that stuff comes from so 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 the 40% rule is all of that you get to 40% your brain says we're done let's roll man this is starting to get painful this is uncomfortable so you sit down you have to figure out ways and everybody's different that's how the book kind of talks about like we all have these things about you know five steps to this and, and four steps to this it's, it's a lot more than that that's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay. Let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it, though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. Dude, we're gonna try to thread a really powerful needle right now. So your response to all of that has been so incredible. So, all right, mind has a governor. It starts to kick in when you hit pain. You're looking for areas of comfort. Most people then live their entire lives there. They never try to get out of it. But you had such a fascinating response uh, you said two things which I think need to be explored. One is that you created this alter ego, Goggins, mm -hmm. which I think is insanely powerful and it reminds me of Eminem talked about the same thing with creating Slim Shady, 
was it was the way, he, once he had the persona, he could face his fears and he could get up. Um, and then the other thing was, you said you need to shut the f up and listen. But talking about just to yourself, like not to try to get a distraction, not social media, not TV, nothing. Like go in a room by yourself and really listen. How do those two things, the, the creation of the alter ego and that listening to the, the sort of dark, hateful things that you're probably saying to yourself, how do those work together? So a lot of people can live with themselves. That's the first thing. A lot of people can live with themselves, look in the mirror and say, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm okay with going on this easy highway over here. The easy highway has all these signs and shit, directions, how to get somewhere. And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that's saying, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, okay, that's okay. It's okay to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is a guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to fucking be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that here in a second, I'm going to start fucking stammering and stuttering. And the whole world is going to know that I have all these issues. But that's when I see right now, okay, Goggins, you got to go on this fucking show. That's Goggins. Goggins is saying, okay, David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, all of you who don't like me, who don't want to, and that person then comes in. But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm up here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with, with, with uh, reading and writing and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're going to get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities. It is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says, whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. That's Goggins. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you want to be better, you realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we want to be, not who we are. So that's where that dark room is.